It's the history of the tunnels that keeps me going. It's Auckland's history lost, and it shouldn't be lost. It should be available to everybody. In the middle of Auckland's CBD, there's a network of tunnels below Albert Park. Many people come and go without knowing what lies directly beneath their feet. Bill Reid is one man who knows more than most. My tunnel vision is to open up these tunnels, the main tunnel mainly, preserve history, create tourism within Auckland City, and let the descendants of the original builders of the tunnels walk through what their forefathers built. Bill's fascination with the tunnels was sparked way back in 1955 when he stumbled upon one of the tunnel's ventilation shafts. I had a vision that later on in my life that I'd like to find out what those tunnels were as there were no entry exits. He went on to start his own family and another 30 years would pass before Bill decided to finally find out what was under Albert Park. For six months I never told my wife where I went and uh, I would go for hours at a time. I never asked my wife, but I believe she would have thought that I may have been having an affair, and I wasn't. I was dotting the I's, crossing the T's, before I said a word to anybody. Some days he disappeared without me knowing. He was away doing research, plus also running a business at the same time, so a lot of the time we were here on our own. That's what you do in a marriage. You support each other and what they do and hope that they achieve their dreams. What he discovered was an entire network totalling 3.5 k's. The main tunnel stretched from Victoria Street East, under Albert Park and Princess Street, and right through to Constitution Hill. The tunnels were built during World War II because people feared a Japanese invasion. We have heavy batteries at our coastal defence positions. Our military forces have been armed and trained so that adequate strength can be rushed at short notice to any point of danger. Work began in 1942 on the biggest air raid shelter in New Zealand, capable of sheltering more than 20,000 people. Over 300 people worked on the project, which was completed in just eight months. The main tunnel, 2,022 feet, uh, six inches long, it's huge, sealed disappeared. In my briefcase are all the historic details of the Albert Park tunnels from conception to completion. By the time the war ended the tunnels wooden supports were deteriorating and without the money to make them permanently safe clay blocks were used to fill the tunnels in. They backfilled the tunnels with the clay blocks from floor to ceiling just in case of tunnel collapse. This is a sample of a, a block that came out of the tunnel and this is sample number 67 which I've had fired which takes it from a clay block to a brick. They originally estimated that there would be uh, four million blocks to fill the tunnels and through an oversight it took 8.5 million. It took 15 men and 12 months to backfill the tunnels. The entrances were sealed shut, left and forgotten. Over here are the main entries to the air raid tunnels, the three air raid tunnels that were built. There is a plaque to the stone sculpture. Nothing whatsoever says anything about the tunnels that lay behind these stone walls. Bill thought how wonderful it would be if these tunnels were restored and reopened to the public. In 1988, he approached the Auckland City Council. He wanted the sole rights to excavate and develop the tunnels. It became a very long and expensive ordeal. My plan was to open up the main tunnel as a tourist attraction and transport tunnel, to introduce into Auckland Glowworm Grotto, Blackwater Rafting, in conjunction with a museum recreated to look like the tunnels as they were back in 1942. The biggest struggle was just getting council on board. 
Restoring the tunnels and exposing them to public view is a very desirable outcome. Um, the problem is most of what was in there, by the way, first aid stations, um, toilet stations, were exceedingly primitive and probably have decayed to nothingness. But the tunnels themselves are of historic interest and it would be good for people to be able to see into them, probably not to go into them. To go into them would involve protection works that would effectively obliterate their historic value. But yes, it would be very desirable. For 10 years, Bill made very little progress with the council, but in 1996, there was a glimpse of light at the end of this very long tunnel. On the 28th of February 1996, which was 50 years to the day the tunnels were closed, was the signing of the agreement with Auckland City Council. This gave Bill the exclusive rights to excavate under Albert Park. The very first thing he did was open the first six metres of the entrance to tunnel number six and walk inside. Around this time, Bill was contacted by senior Auckland University architect Dr Garrick Tonks. Dr Tonks had his own ideas for using the main tunnel as a transport link to reduce the city's traffic congestion. He suggested a transport interchange on the corner of Stanley Street and Beach Road where people could park and catch a train under Albert Park right through to the heart of Auckland's CBD. It's an alternate route um, through the city which actually goes beneath the city in the area that's the most difficult for traffic to actually move around. But the problem then was money. I certainly didn't have the money. Nobody came up with the money. What my thought was way back is that Auckland City Council would join me in a joint venture to do this for Auckland City. But that's never happened. So when their finances, I think, ran a bit low, Tonks and Reid made a plea to Auckland City Council, as it then was, for the council to come in financially and fund the remainder of their investigation. That wasn't met with any sense of approval because this was a commercial venture on their part. And the response that we gave them was, this is your baby, it's your problem to fund it, not council's. Bill had already spent well over $200,000 on the project. This financial sacrifice was shared with others. There was a week where there was no food in our fridge for my two uh, five, six-year-old children. Yeah, it was love that kept us going in those days. There was lots of things that we could have done with the money that we used. I suppose taking the kids on trips and having more up-to-date things in the house and the kids missing out on his time too. Hmm. Twelve months passed without any signs of the council changing their minds. Then, one afternoon, Bill got a call from his mother-in-law. Hi, Marge. What, what's happening? She said on the front paper is an article by an engineer from Auckland City Council to say that they were going to spend $100 million building a transport tunnel through Albert Park Tunnels, which I had exclusive rights over. I went and bought the Herald. Unfortunately, what was missing was the name of Bill Reid. I was reasonably upset. Auckland City Council called me to two further meetings. They fed me, they coffeed me, and they settled me down. And I never sued them. Bill's dream came to a complete standstill. The council pulled out of their proposed transport link under Albert Park and without council funding, Bill and Garrick realised it would never happen. And the last hope for the project disappeared ten years later when Dr Garrick Tonks died. He had died of a heart attack at lunchtime and that crushed me. I took the wind out of my sails and I turned my back on the project as of that day. It would have been lovely for him to have had his dream of something happening that would be would benefit him as well as Auckland City. I will never regret 
the path I've taken with the Albert Park Tunnels because what I've learned and what I've gleaned, the information that I've given to a vast amount of people, I'd never change my dream. I believe it could still happen and it should still happen. Bill Reed's now 72. He's devoted a quarter of his life to this battle. But is the dream really over? I've just heard that Sky City want to put a link through to the International Airport using the tunnels um, as a bypass through to the, the CBD. What do you think of that? Oh, not again. <laughs>